We examine those rumours of an escape route from the new household charge which have surfaced on the internet as well. Now, it's been doing the rounds in cyberspace over the past week or so that a legal loophole exists, which means that if you don't register for the household charge, then you don't have to pay it. The suggestion was that because the bill is a statute, it only carries the force of law if you consent to it, or in this case, if you register for the charge. Now, we were on to the Department of the Environment yesterday, and their spokesman confirmed that there's no basis whatsoever to this theory, but some of our listeners are still confused. So joining me on the line now, hopefully to throw some light on the issue, is barrister and author Tim Bracken. He was on the show recently talking about probate. Uh, Tim, good morning. Good morning, Pat. How are you? Now, I'm very well. Um, This kind of thing says uh, you won't get a bill because the charge is a statute. People need to understand this. A statute is a legislated rule of society given the force of law by the consent of the governed. Now, Pat, this is just like every pub in the country. And in every pub in the country, there's a character who sits up at the top of the counter dispensing legal knowledge willy-nilly to all and sundry. And normally the pub lawyer, that's what you could describe him as, and 99.999% of what he says is absolute rubbish. (laughs) And this, I have to say, is absolute rubbish as well. The first thing is, you won't get a bill because the charge is a statute. Every single tax in this country is statute-based. Income tax is the income tax tax, capital tax, capital gains, capital acquisitions, capital tax tax. That, that tax. Excise duty, excise duty, stamp duty. And, and this, this tax is no different. This is a statute-based tax, and there, is, there are sanctions if you don't pay it. And, I mean, to say that it is not operative and that you don't have to register is absolute nonsense. So, what are the implications if you take this internet advice and don't register and don't pay? Well, you'll probably sit there, and I would think that in about 12 months' time, you will get a summons to the district court. And you'll be dragged down to the district court where you will be convicted of failing to make your declaration, which is effectively registration of it, and pay your tax to the local authority. You'll be fined a fine of approximately 100 euros, but you'll also end up paying the tax or the expenses and charges of the local authority in bringing you to court. Now, the problem here is that most people think like rates in the old days are service charge, that a bill is going to drop in the door and they'll just pay it and that's it. But I don't think a bill is going to issue in this case. From my reading of the Act, the onus is on you to make the declaration about your property to the local authority and pay the tax. Um, do you have a difficulty with that, uh, simply on a practical level? I mean, once you register a, a new car or even a second-hand car, you then get a reminder in the post and a self-service number and you can go online or you can go to your local motor taxation office and and pay it. This one, you have to DIY it. Absolutely DIY it. It's obviously cost-saving and it's DIY. And I think it's appalling because a lot of people don't have access to the internet. Now, you can register, it says, and you see, the thing is, the Act came in on the 1st of January. Then there was a statutory instrument, which is Statutory Instrument 1 of 2012, which sets out what you must put into your declaration and the details you must give. But who's going to find out what a statutory, where a statutory instrument is? You get it from government publications, or else you go online to the Irish Statute Book and look up statutory instruments, and it's the first one in 2012. But how many people don't have access to computers, particularly elderly people? And the lack so of you can register in writing. You can register in writing, or else you can register online at www.householdcharge.ie. But, but you can't get the information in writing unless you're no, near government publications. Exactly, or, or else, unless you go online. So what about elderly people who have no access to computers or don't have family who have access to computers? I mean, they're waiting for the bill to come in the door. It's not going to come. And actually, the lack of information from the department about this is absolutely appalling. I, I, I read two newspapers a day. I listen to the radio constantly look at some television, but I have not seen any ads by the department giving information to people as to what number, what information they should give, and to whom they should pay the tax. Uh, By the way, when you do register, be it online or in writing, um, I presume if you're registering in writing, you have to send away for a form, they send it back to you, you fill it up, and send it back to them. Well, I don't know. I don't know know if there's a form. All the statutory instrument says that you register or you make your declaration in writing or else you go online to this uh, www address. So what what do you have to tell them if you register? You have to tell them. The information required to be furnished, and this is in the statutory instrument, there are five elements of information. Number one is the name of the owner of the residential property because it's only the owner of the residential property who has to make this declaration. Mm. First of all, the property has to be residential and then you have to be an owner. So like if you're a tenant, 
in a property for under 20 years, you're not regarded as the owner. Yeah. It is the actual owner. But anyway, number one is the name and owner of the residential property in respect of which the declaration is made. B, the address, and if necessary to identify it, because perhaps we're in a rural area, a description of the property. The address for correspondence of the owner of the property. The personal public service number of the person, or in the case of, uh, in, that's in the case of an individual, or in the case uh, of the tax reference number of a company if that owns the property. And then, this is the last one, and this is obviously setting it up for water charges in the future. Whether the property is connected to A, a public water main, main B, a group water scheme, or C, a private well. Now, I mean, the thing is, like, nobody, nobody, I don't think anybody had that information unless you went online to look for it. Um, suppose you do nothing and you hear nothing and there are so many people uh, who've been encouraged by the anti-household charges uh, to pay, don't pay, and you do, uh, you know, the court is too busy to truck with you. What happens if you decide to sell the house five years down the road having... Uh, oh, this charge is building up per annum on the house and you have to provide... Um, a certificate of discharge of the charge to any purchaser of the house, because if a purchaser doesn't take that and buys the house without having that uh, certificate of discharge, well, then that purchaser will become liable to the arrears of tax that have built up on that house. And the problem is, if it's a 30% surcharge on you because you haven't paid it, and then you leave, you know, that year uh, attracts Mm. another 30% surcharge, and and then you've got the new year as well... And then you've got the third year and the surcharges on the previous two years. Yes. And then the fourth year mm-hmm. and the surcharges on the previous... So when you eventually sell your property, there could be quite a hefty lump taken off it. Quite a hefty lump. And then there's interest running at 1% per month on the arrears. And the thing is, you see, um, there is an obligation. I want to go back just to nail this thing on the head about whether you know whether they are obliged to pay it or not. Section 5 of the Act which is the Local Government Household Charge Act of 2011. That's the operative section. And I'll just read the first part of the section. It's a bit legalistic, but I'll explain it. And it says, The owner of a residential property who, on a liability date, is liable to pay a household charge to a relevant local authority or is entitled to a waiver from payment of that household charge under subsection 4 of section 4 in respect of the year in which that liability date falls, shall, and that's the important word, shall, make and provide to the relevant local authority a declaration stating that he or she is so liable or so entitled effectively to a waiver if necessary. And the case may be. And it says the declaration shall be made in a form, you know, where it will be prescribed, which has been prescribed now by the statutory instrument, and in the case of a person who is liable to pay a household charge, be accompanied by payment. In effect, and there's a, there's a set, there's a, a description of how you can pay it. But the thing is, we go back to the word shall, Shall is a mandatory word. I mean, we all go back to the first thing we learned when we were kids in school or whatever, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. You know, it is a mandatory word. And therefore, once in a statute says shall, you're under a legal obligation to do it. So no escape. There's no escape. You're under all right, legal obligation to And the other thing is, if you don't pay it before you go, Pat, is then sec- subsection four of that. A person who contravenes these subsections shall be guilty of an offence and shall be liable on summary conviction to a Class C fine. A Class C fine is one that doesn't exceed €254. Euros. All right, but you still have to pay the original bill. Tim Bracken, thank you very much for joining Pat, us. Pat, you're more than welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, James O'Sullivan, and uh, I just have a few questions about this, the, the household charge. Surely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who, who exactly does it apply to? I'm a bit confused about it. Um, it applies to the house, um, the owner of the house. Okay. The owner of the property. Does it apply to? So it doesn't apply to tenants then. No. It doesn't apply to them. Okay. If you're on social welfare, does it apply to you? If you're on social welfare, uh, you still have to pay it, yes. Okay. If you're, so, so the only way you don't have to pay it is if you're on mortgage interest release, relief supplement, is that correct? Yes, or you're living in one of these ghost estates, the house, uh, unfinished housing estates. All right. Okay. And uh, I just, can I just ask you as well, because um, I, I'm a, a student of the law, uh, just a question is are you uh, lawfully obliged to pay the household tax it's it's not actually a household tax household charge so therefore it's a self declaration charge okay so you're not lawfully obliged to pay it then 
no, but it is in the legislation. Thank you, James. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.